Welcome back to my little sewing channel. Today we are making the cutest springy summer top. It has little bows on the sides and this is so easy to make. We are gonna draft this pattern, but I'm telling you it's very beginner friendly. All I'm using is some plaid cotton fabric and some half an inch wide double fold bias tape. Let's start by drafting a very simple pattern. I'm using a tank top that I already own, so I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm just gonna trace the outline. As you can tell, this tank top is a little bit stretchy and the cotton fabric I'm using is not stretchy. So as I trace this, I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit by maybe an extra inch, inch and a half to give me a little bit more room. All right, now I'm taking a ruler and I'm gonna straighten my lines all around. And now's the point where you can really customize this. So I knew I wanted to shave off a little on the sleeve. So I'm bringing the sleeve in by about a fourth of an inch and I'm gonna taper it into the neckline. I'm also making the armhole a little bit bigger. And if you know me, you know I love a good cropped shirt. So I'm shortening this top by a few inches. And I also wanted to give it a curved hem. So I'm just kind of freehanding a little curved hem here. Now we need to add half an inch seam allowance all around. So I like to use a different color pen just so I know which, which one is my seam allowance. And now we can cut it out. And this will be for the front of our top. And I'm gonna trace this piece almost exactly for the back of the tank top, but I am gonna change it a tiny bit. So I wanna bring the neckline up a little bit, as you can tell on most tops, the back neckline comes up a little higher than the front. Also the armhole is always a little bit different in the back. There's like more fabric there for the back. So I'm gonna do that and trace it all around. And since I already added seam allowance on the front, the back now already has seam allowance too. So we're done. Now I'm laying my fabric out. It is folded in half and I'm cutting this on the fold. So at the bottom there is a folded edge. This is where I'm gonna place my pattern piece and cut it out. And this is how we get a perfectly symmetrical cut. I'll do the same thing for the back pattern piece using my little candle as a pattern weight. Now that that's done, we just need to cut some little bow ties. So I'm cutting mine two by 13 inches. This will make a half an inch wide bow tie. You're gonna to wanna to cut eight of these strips. This is gonna make four sets of bow ties. All right, let's start sewing. So to make the little ties, I'm gonna fold the top edge down by about half an inch, and then I'm gonna fold the whole thing in half and press it. And this will be our little guideline for the center point. So now I'm gonna fold each edge in to that center point and press it. And then I'm gonna fold the whole thing in half and press it down. Now we should have a lovely little bow tie. I'm gonna do the same thing for all eight pieces. And now we're just gonna sew it all along that long edge. A little tip, if you're ever sewing something really skinny, sometimes it helps to hold on to the thread tails while you sew the first few stitches just to carry it along. Otherwise, your sewing machine can't really carry along something that's like really skinny, if that makes sense. So just a little tip. Now that our little ties are done, we're gonna move on to the top. So I'm putting the front and the back top pieces right sides together, and I'm gonna sew them along the shoulders. Now's a good time to try it on and make sure you like the fit of everything. Make sure you like the neckline, make sure the armhole looks good. Mine was like borderline too tight, so I did shave off a little on the armhole. Now I'm just kind of loosely pinning the bow ties on, figuring out where I want them. So for the top bow tie, I'm gonna place it half an inch down from the edge of the armhole, and then I'm gonna place the other one three inches down from that. And minor detail, all of these ties should have one finished end and one unfinished end. We wanna be pinning the unfinished ends onto the top. I'm gonna fold the shirt and make sure that my placement lines up on both sides. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side of the shirt. Again, folding it to make sure everything lines up and then folding it again, making sure that all of my ties are gonna match up perfectly. And now we're just gonna sew these little ties on. So I'm just gonna sew a little seam on all of my ties, which will connect them to the shirt. And the last step, we just need to finish all of these raw edges, including the neckline edges, with bias tape. If you've never used bias tape, this is one of my favorite ways to finish raw edges. So I have it opened up. I'm gonna pin the edge onto the right side of my fabric, and I'm just gonna pin it all along the top. Now this can get a little bit tricky when we're going around the curves, but the good thing about bias tape is it's pretty malleable, and it goes around corners and curves really well. We also have this pretty harsh corner at the armhole, but don't fret, because because bias tape also works around corners. And this is gonna look really sloppy, but I promise it works. You're just gonna kind of fold, like almost pleat 
the bias tape, pinch it and fold it and like shape it around the curve. I'm gonna show you from a different angle. I'm just pinching it and curving it until I get it to go around the corner and I'll just put a pin there. I'm gonna do this all around the outside of the top. I switched over to clips instead of pins because I felt like it was easier. Once we're approaching the end, you're probably like, how do I connect these two ends? There are a few ways. I'm gonna show you my favorite way. So I've cut off the edge, giving myself a few inches of slack. You could attach them this way sewing them right sides together and then cutting off the excess fabric. But the easier way is folding this little edge in and pinning it down. And then basically I'm just gonna sew all along this bias tape. When I get to the end, I'm gonna just keep sewing. Keep sewing over that folded edge until it overlaps by about an inch. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So I'm starting with that little folded edge. You see it's folded upward. And I'm just gonna start sewing all around the bias tape. And I'm sewing this in the middle of the bias tape at half an inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm getting to my first corner. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to manipulate the bias tape to go around this little corner. And then you'll get to a point where you need to pivot your needle. So drop the needle down lift the presser foot up and pivot your fabric. Drop the presser foot back down and keep sewing. This is the classic how we pivot around corners. Okay, I'm gonna keep sewing and we are approaching the end. So I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. See our little end piece? I'm gonna go around that final curve and I'm just gonna keep sewing until there's like an inch or two of overlap. This doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure it overlaps. And now I'm gonna cut off that excess bias tape. So now the next step is to fold the bias tape over to the wrong side of the fabric and sew it down. But this can get a little bit bulky because of all of those layers there. So I'm gonna trim this seam allowance in half. You wanna be really careful when you do this. You don't wanna cut your shirt when you're doing this, but trim the seam allowance in half. As you can see now, when we fold the bias tape over, there's a lot less bulk and it just lays a lot better. So you definitely don't need to do that step, but it's really, really helpful. So I'm gonna trim the seam allowance along the entire shirt. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this, I would say the only spots that are necessary to trim the seam allowance are around the curves and around those harsh corners, because you really can't have bulk there when we do our next step. Okay, once that's done, we're gonna fold the bias tape over to the wrong side of the fabric and give it a good press. This is crucial. This gives you really nice clean edges. And as you can see around that janky little corner that we sewed, it does look weird on the inside of the fabric. It does, I'll admit. But on the outside of the fabric, it looks great. That is the magic of bias tape. So I'm gonna go around the entire shirt, ironing this bias tape. And to finish the bias tape, we need to sew one more seam all around the shirt. I like to sew this on the outside of the shirt because I think it looks better. I'm gonna sew this at about a fourth of an inch seam allowance all around the shirt, just going slow around the curves and pivoting around the corners. And now I'm gonna do the same exact thing around the neckline. So again, starting with my little folded edge, I'm gonna clip that down and I'll pin this all around the neckline. When I get to the end, I'm gonna give myself a lot of slack just in case and cut it. And now I'll sew it all around just like we did before. Again, when I get to the end, I'm gonna keep sewing, overlapping that edge by about an inch. And I'll go ahead and cut the slack. Again, we wanna get rid of some of that bulk, so I'm gonna trim the seam allowance in half. Now taking it to the iron, I'm gonna fold the bias tape to the wrong side of the fabric and press it down. And for our final step, I'm just gonna do my last seam going all the way around. Bias tape never ceases to amaze me. Look at how nice it looks on the inside and the outside of the fabric. It's so neat. And my little corners really don't look that bad. I love how this top turned out. It's absolutely adorable. I will say, as part of the itty bitty committee, I'm not gonna say that word, this shirt fits really well. If I did have bigger I would probably opt for adding like a bust dart because I think it would fit around the curves a little bit better with a bust dart. I just wanted to keep this tutorial very simple so I did not add a dart. And I think bust darts would get rid of some of this extra dangly fabric around the armpits. But overall, I love the fit of this top. It's so simple to make and it will be a summer staple. Also, I'm planning on making some plaid pants to go with this so keep an eye out for that. I'll be posting it on Instagram and TikTok. That's about it. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.